to call the October 19th, 2020 regularly scheduled Berlin Select Board meeting to order. Uh, with us is uh, Justin Lawrence on speakerphone, uh, Flo Smith to my left, uh, John uh, Quinn uh, on my right, Angelina Capron is here also on the phone. Um, we have addition, we have one addition to the agenda for Tom Willard to be appointed to the uh, Conservation Commission. And we are now to uh, public comment. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, public comment. Okay, I, I'm here in reference to the opening of Black Road to snowmobiles. Yeah. One of which there was no warning via paper to even give me uh, uh, any sort of indication that this was being considered. Two years ago it was considered and although I didn't attend that meeting, my son did. There was two or three people in favor. All the rest of the folks of the town of Berlin were opposed. And all of a sudden, apparently they're gonna, they've already okayed it. One, if you look at that road, if you're headed up from here, by the pond, when you go to make a right hand turn on Black Road, it's not a 90 degree angle, it's more like a 75 degree angle. The town can't plow the road right there. There's a huge bank because they have to plow it with a push track. That piles the bank up on the right hand side, very high. So when you're making a right hand turn, you can't see over the bank. You have to swing the corner extremely wide because it's a a 75 degree angle. Second off on that road, in front of Phil Scott's house for his driveway, there's a considerable incline. There's a hill right there and it peaks right at his driveway. You cannot see one side from the other for more than 100 feet, especially even with a car. You can barely see somebody. A snowmobile, you're not going to see them until they're right on top of you. That it's just a bad idea. Second off, and I quote from the paper, uh, this is, I believe, Mr. Quinn. I think it's a good place to start, he said, suggesting allowing on-road use could prompt adjacent home landowners to allow trail crossing their property instead of using the road. Is that correct? Paraphrasing, yeah. It doesn't seem to me that it's the boards should be taking up the matter of forcing landowners, myself included, as well as my neighbor, to open our property to snowmobiles. The reason I refused originally, and my neighbor as well, to open our property, is because a certain gentleman on the other side of the road, Josh Walker, came up and asked permission. He lied to my son. He lied uh, to Earl Emerson where they were going to cross. No part of that. I want no part of that. That's why they will not cross my property. He is a liar. So, so uh, we're not, we're not going to get into that type of well, that's fine. We're not. I wanted to. I wanted so, so I, to state I can, my. I, yeah, no, and, and I appreciate it. And I can tell you where I was coming from when I made that statement. Well, I, I don't believe it's this board's right to do that. I don't believe it's ethical. Okay. And I'm not sure about the legality of that. Okay. I mean, as a board member on the select board, do you really believe you should be trying to force me to open my property? So, if. If you'd let me explain my okay. comment, then then I'd be happy to share with you. My my comment was was um, being being new to the area, being new to um, you know the conversation overall. I didn't know what the conversation was with the previous landowners. My intent was to get outdoor recreation started where there's a trail coming from Berlin to Northfield and vice versa. Over time, when we have more time, because it's now the middle of October, we can approach landowners and see if they would like to bring it up in the woods. If they don't, that's okay. I, I, my, my intent was not to force anyone 
to feel like they had to bring it on their land, and that's your right. You don't have to bring it on your land. And I, I don't believe your intent for okay. a moment, to be honest with you. All right. Because two years ago, there was a meeting right here in this very room addressing the same thing. Well, I wasn't here two years ago. Paper, and out of all the people that showed up, other than two or three people from the very Thunder Chickens and Jeff Walker, everybody else in the room was opposed to that. Yeah. Well, and I was, all of a sudden, we're not even warned in his past. We didn't have any, any warning whatsoever. Right. Well, I, I wasn't here two years ago. Well, maybe you should have looked at the records. Okay. Or some of these other gentlemen were here two years ago. They, they didn't make a comment to it. I mean, you were here two years ago. You remember the meetings. Oh, yeah. They were a poor idea. I mean, that trail going Black Road was a poor idea then. Yeah. It still is. Yeah. Well, when we took, when, in that meeting, we, we okayed using the Crosstown Road to go under the bridge right onto here. Justin Lawrence's land. Mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't approve anything beyond that. That's correct. I have that here as well. Yeah. Now they approved according to the paper and according to your minutes, you've approved using Black Road. Again, the, uh, the one of the troubles I'm seeing here with the uh, with uh, all of this is that there was a there. I mean, it's going to be a trail to nowhere because apparently with the truck with the land trust. And the land that they are looking to go and use to get to connect to uh, Northfield, there's no uh, allowance for motor vehicles. That's correct. So the it doesn't matter. I mean, I can't I can't foresee anything going up and down Black Road. Is they can't go anywhere. It's just a dead end. But then why pass a law or pass an ordinance to allow them to do so? Well, that was, I mean, that was passed before I had read the, uh, the uh, uh, covenants. covenants of the uh, land trust. So, with, the, with knowing the covenants, there's no way that, the, that even, uh, well, I mean, getting under the throughway is all right, but uh, going on the roads is a dead issue. Well, I think we no need to, to go. yeah, I think we need to see the proposed map by Vast to see where they intend to put the trail. Right. I mean, I mean that we, well, I mean, we need to look at it all the way through. I'm trying to think. I don't know the lay of the land up there that well, but I don't believe there's any way to get to Northfield once you get up, even to, because Darling Hill blocks you. That's correct. City of Montpelier has already refused use of their property. Yeah. They're on the other side of the road. They've already refused that. Okay. Now again, from the last meeting. And, and, uh, there's no way after me, what's going on. So, yeah. so uh, I know the conservation. I, I know the Hi, I, I'm having a little hard time hearing, but I'm from the Conservation Commission. Yeah, um, we, need to, we need to weigh in here. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, they are on the agenda. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. Alan, yeah. Alan, yeah. Alan and, Phil. and Phil. Phil Gentilly from the Conservation Commission. Phil, uh, Phil, Phil. Phil. We're going to have you on at 7.30, okay? I understand that. I'm wondering if the gentleman in the audience would like to have a copy of what we sent to the select board that may clarify some issues for him. I can do that, but I think we'll clarify it when we get to your piece of the agenda. We have other business here. So if everybody could just okay. hold on, okay? Okay. Okay, can you hold on? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. So, any other public comment? Hearing none, um, treasurer's report, Diane? Okay, I have another contractor's application for payment, payment number four, from King Turner Park North, and it's for in the amount of $396,066.38. It has been signed off by the contractor, the engineer, and the USDA, and I do need to chair the board to sign off on it. So, I do believe that you need to get a motion. I make the motion to approve the amount of three hundred and ninety-six thousand sixty-six dollars and thirty-eight cents as presented by Diane Isabel. I'll second that. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Justin. Justin and Angelina, can I you can hear just, us? I, I can't. I can't even hear what what you guys are saying with the setup that we have. So I, it's almost pointless. So I'm gonna have to let you both rest. Okay. Yeah. Um. Neither of you are supposed to be able to hear the meeting. I will. Turnpike North sewer project. It's just the uh, 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 the regular uh, requ requisition from the contractor. I, I don't know what the what amount. Three hundred and ninety-six thousand sixty-six dollars and thirty-eight cents. Three hundred ninety-six thousand dollars and some change. And vote yay or nay. Angelina and Justin, they're looking for a yay or nay from you. Aye. Justin? Was that an aye, Justin? I vote in favor of that. Okay. I think he hung up. Uh, okay. Uh, motion chair. Sherilyn and Joe, they work for state uh, BGS, so they're, you know, kind of the, the experts as far as the building, um, the history of it, and, you know, what, what we're looking to do there, so I'll flip it to them once I uh, did my piece. You know, we just, you were introduced to the, the project, I think, by a letter of Commissioner Sherling sent, um, so that was kind of our outreach to say, hey, this is, uh, you know, something that we're seriously considering on doing. Um, so there's, it's, it's not like it's going to happen next month. This is a long, uh, rather long-term project. It would be something that would happen next year, um, year the other year, something like that, if things go well. So, you know, the Middlesex Barracks, um, as people know, is pretty uh, worn down. Um, it, uh, it's an old building. Has serious electrical sewer issues. Joe probably or Cheryl would probably speak to that too. It's just it's 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 done. I mean, I started there 20 years ago and it was done then. So <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. And I would I welcome anyone if you want to come tour it, you want to look around, so you can really see firsthand uh, with where where this place is at. It's just it's it's rough. So it's it's we really gotta uh, find something uh, new to get the troopers in so they got their space to do their work. Um, you know, the idea was to build a new barracks like we have around the state. Places like Westminster, New Haven, Derby, um, St. Albans have new buildings and they're all architecturally pretty similar. So we have kind of a standard that we like to build, but um, just with budget issues and we have another project, the Williston Barracks needs to get replaced. Um, it's just it's not feasible right now to build two new barracks. So that's why we kind of, um, we're steered towards renovating an existing building in the area that was centrally located and this uh, building down the road kind of fit the bill and um, you know we've kind of started the, the bidding process and getting an architect and how that I'll let Cheryl and or Joe speak to that um, and then you know the other reason I want to be here just if anyone had any questions uh, you know what it's like to have a state police barracks as a neighbor 
Um, I can certainly speak to that. Um, if, any, if anyone's concerned on what that would bring to the area. As far as I'm concerned, it's, it's all good stuff, but if anyone does have any uh, concerns, I'll certainly answer those kind of questions. Um, but yeah, we're just we're excited to, you know, get the troopers into a better space that will uh, allow them to be more functional and, um, you know, it's just uh, the, the mill stack spares are just beyond repair. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. I have two so, questions. Okay. Yeah. How long do you expect to be here? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, you know, it all a lot of it depends on budgets and how much. I mean, Joe or Caroline. I mean, that's hard to say. It's going to be. We're you know we're not going to spend uh, the money we're going to spend and just be there for six months. I mean, it'll yeah. be we'll be there for a while. Whether we'll be there for ten years, fifteen years, twenty. I don't. That's hard to say. I don't know, Joe or Caroline. At this point, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, basically, it's to build a permanent facility. So moving out of Middlesex. Moving into Burma. Okay. <clears throat> right. So, you, so when we say we don't know how long, are you talking about the building or the town? Uh, the building. Yeah, the building. So we, if we ended up, if the state ended up having the funds to build a new facility, you know, this uh, this is a good central location for for the barracks to be. So we could end up. I know. You, I think Joe, you, you probably explored trying to buy land. We started a project. Here. Yeah. Looking at uh, relocating you five, six years ago, I think we went out, did a, a, a test to see where we could find land close to the interstate. Uh, nothing came up. We did look at the library site because it was still a library back in those days. Yeah. Now that things have changed, uh, Berlin was not on the radar. Built, relocated to Middlesex wasn't on the radar. It's just that uh, did with Williston right off. Things have changed a little bit. And so Wilson was up first, and then now Middlesex because of the condition of the existing facility. So we have the opportunity in Berlin at the old library site. What we were looking at is creating a temporary facility first, and potentially um, tearing it down and building new, maybe buying land if need be. Uh, but the costs just weren't there. We were looking at you know, two and a half million to make a temporary site. And what the legislature was giving us for land purchase and design was roughly the same dollar amount. So we looked at it as uh, throwing out that, well, what if we made it a permanent home? Because it's roughly 25, 3,000 square feet more than what they have now. It doesn't match the existing new barracks that we're building. However, it would still be a great improvement for what they have. The downside of building now and making it a permanent home is the energy code. So there's, you know, we're going to have to strip the inside of the outside walls and increase the insulation. Two of the windows in the building are single pane from the 60s when it was built. They've got to be changed out. In 86, 87, we put an addition on the building. Uh, and that has six inch walls. However, today's energy code wants a little bit more for our value. Same with the roof, so we've got to do that. We want to sprinkle the building. The building will have um, two holding cells. So, you know, if they're paying somebody off the street or whatever, they bring them in, it's temporary holding. They technically are not spending the night and the whole day. They're brought in, processed, and that's when somebody can transport them to another facility or go to court the next day. Uh, but there'll be two holding cells. And we were able to fit that all in the existing building. It's not as pretty as we would like because uh, one part of the building where the holding cells are going has got a three, three and a half foot difference in elevation. But we can make it work inside of the money that the legislature has given us. And there will be future renovations because we don't have the funds to do everything that we would like to do right out of the gate, like we would with a new building. However, by starting with the outside walls and working our way in, giving them a functional facility, we should be pretty good for over the years. Right now, we're, we're not looking at addition. We're looking at keeping the same parking, same drive. Um, the drive does need work. So we are looking to, on the incline portion, to repave that. You just ran a new sewer line through there. We have an uh, on-site septic. It is capped at for us, for occupancy, is 25. 
but in the 30 plus years I've been here, we never want to be in the sewer business because if something fails, it's always, you know, wrong time, always at night, something like that. Weekend, can't get people. So we're gonna connect both the water and the sewer and abandon, um, close the well and do away with the septic system. There will be a area um, on the, what's it, east side, I guess, there'll be their secure yard. So there will be a fence with an electronic gate that they will be able to come and go in and park some of their vehicles, some of, uh, you know, with an impound vehicle, and also go to the back of the building, if you will, to come into where their holding cells would be. And Sally Ford in there for a vehicle, drive a vehicle in, you be able to take the uh, person out of the car and bring them in to process them. The fencing, are you saying, Ian, is, is that going to be uh, visible from the road, or is that just going to be behind the building or over the crown? I don't. Because of the height of the building and where it's going to be, uh, I don't know how well you know the property, but as you crest up and go sort of towards the back of the building, I envision it, it maybe towards the end of the, what is the parking lot, or what was the parking lot, have a gate in that area, not 100% sure yet. Uh, funding's going to somewhat drive that, so it may have to go closer towards the back. But I don't think you're going to be able to see it from the road. If it is, it's going to be very minimal. It's not a 12 foot high, razor ribbon, and all that. That's my other projects. Uh, but so it'll be all our other facilities are um, black, vinyl coated fence. Yeah. I have two questions. One for you. How many officers are going to be stationed there? So the total. Um, it's, it's like 25, 27, 20, 27. Yeah. yeah, like, and, uh, we just were having this conversation today actually about like a normal day shift, uh, during the week we'll have about 11 personnel there on the weekends. It cuts down to about six, um, you know, depending on staffing. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, for you guys, do you guys have enough money from the legislature to do the full outfit to get them in the building, or you just have enough to do the architecture exam, architecture review? We have enough to do it all, according to our estimates. Okay. Pricing right now with our biddings that we've seen come in, uh, I've had one that was 50% lower than our estimate. Everything else is 100 to 180% higher due to the materials. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of, uh, right now, um, Softwood lumber is very high and hard to get hold of. We're probably not going to have that on the inside of the building. If anything, it would be metal studs and sheetrock. So I don't think that price-wise we should be that bad. If we are lucky, we'll go with a construction management firm, and we could be out on the street for, re -bid for bidding out um, the sub-trades as early as March or April, then working with our architectural firm. What's your estimated completion date? I think it was... December. Officer ready. September. Did December. 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 Yep. Okay. 2021. I think is what our RFP said. Okay. So, Joe, I think you and I spoke on the phone before about water and sewer. I sent you some allocation forms. Uh, yes. Just a reminder to get those in. That's why we're hiring an architect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yep. uh, we haven't designed that because we are going with a full sprinkler. And they'll do that testing first to find out exactly what size we'll be, have to bring in from the street. We, we don't charge an allocation for, for fire protection. Mm -hmm. We do uh, just charge on consumption. So it'll be on your head count okay. for both water and sewer. So if, when you have your engineer on board. But, uh, yeah. but that's one of the, the first things you, you need to do. Is, right. Okay. Yeah. No. Been through it before, know that. Have this once, once in a while, a few things, but our intent is to comply. What about concerns? Is there any concerns? That's one of the main reasons why I wanted to come tonight. Is there anyone that is concerned about having the barracks in the town where it is? Is there any? I personally have not heard about it. That's I it. haven't either. I haven't either. I say welcome. Yeah, I mean, uh, most towns, um, it's, it's a plus because you're getting that extra coverage, patrol, you know, we always want to, we'll be a good neighbor, obviously, and if there's issues, we deal with them. Um, but in, uh, you know, the 20 years I've been doing this, I, I can't even think of one time where it was, you know, someone that has a house nearby, there was an issue, like, we've always, we've always had great relationships with the folks that live around our barracks, and, um, you know, it's just a good location there, too, because it's close to the interstate, mm 
for the troopers to, to go up there and take care of crashes and other things. And um, like I said, you can get to the majority of the county pretty efficiently from here. So Now, um, the state police, they're the ones that respond to the state hospital? Um, the, which, the one down near Middlesex, the old, the one next no. to the barracks, or are you talking about the one here? No, no. Yeah. The, the state hospital, the new one that you put in over here by the... Uh, That's the Berlin Police Department. Berlin. Yeah. Yeah. Is that when you move in, will you take over that? or uh, No. <laughs> That's not the plan. <laughs> but uh, you know, we have no intention on, you know, you know pushing the police department. Um, well, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't yeah. complain. I just, yeah, no, I mean, I just we're worry. always, uh, you know, like we... We're always... Uh, willing to assist any police department that needs yeah. a hand so um, that's that's a daily basis so if there is a well, I'm just thinking you're yeah. closer yeah I mean that's at that I mean, if um, when you move in you'll be closer that topic hasn't come up uh, you know off the top of my head I would say you know it's probably because we you know we have a lot of area yeah to already take good care of uh, start and we're sprint then you know because you know on a normal shift uh, there's four troopers patrolling this entire county yeah. um, and then you know, 50 miles of interstate, yep. and uh, so they have they have a lot to do. Uh, and uh, middle, middle sections call wise is known to be a uh, um, you know busy barracks. They, they take care of a lot of calls. Um, they, there's not a lot of idle time for yep. the troopers that work out of that barracks. So, any other questions for? Corporal Man, uh, Manley? Captain. Captain Manley. That's okay. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years, Brad. <laughs> He's putting his time. Yeah. Uh, what it is, I, I will say, you know, having that be my first station 20 years ago, like it's kind of, it's it's rewarding to see it. You know, this project uh, looks like it's going to happen and and it'll be a, a much better space for them to work. So, so. I just want to say thank you for, I mean, this was just announced three weeks ago or something, and, and you got on the phone right, right away to us, to the town, and uh, uh, offered to come up, and thank you for that. Yeah, no, we'll, uh, we can always come back um, as the project, you know, goes along, and um, people are always welcome to stop down and see it. You know, obviously when we, uh, if it all goes well and we get it built and finalized, then, uh, you know, we'll do an open house type thing so folks can come see it and meet the commander of the barracks and others. Um, yeah, we'll... Uh, and if there's any questions, you can reach out to myself. You have my contact, um, Joe or Sherilyn, always available too. Um, so, yeah, I, I see us coming back at least one more time, if not twice. And uh, we need more. We can do that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming thank in. You. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Thanks. Yes, you too. Thank you. Okay, Tom Fisher, real covert. Uh, real quickly. Uh, we completed the survey work down there, and it may appear that we could get into a um, smaller structure than originally the 40-ish feet that we were talking about. We're going to meet with Jared to talk about that this coming week. Um, so it may be smaller than what was originally thought. Um, we are doing the uh, soils work in the next two weeks. Uh, and that's going to determine the, the capability of the footings, what's going to need to be a part of the, the footings for the project. After we have um, that piece of the puzzle, that's going to be the driver with what ultimately the structure is going to look like. So I hope to have some uh, preliminary budget numbers for you guys in two weeks at your, at your next meeting. So. Um, it, it all depends if they can get out there, if the weather holds, and they can get their, their drill rig in and, and get it done. Did um, Otter Creek have anything else to say on this? Um, Other than, I mean, on the uh, on what type of structure would be best? Well, they they've gone with that half pipe at Quonset Hut because that's that was the the thought process. Yeah. Steel um, or concrete? Uh, uh, cast cast concrete. Yeah. 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 As the most seems to be the most economical right for, now for length of time. Correct, and um, it, a lot's going to uh, uh, depend on this um, soil soils work that we're doing. Yep. 
We got the conservation commission here. Uh, okay, let's take and get that. Ken, you want to? Yeah. Phil is he's not here from yeah. the conservation okay. committee though. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, the floor, can you tell me who's all here from the Conservation Commission? Uh, uh, I am not here. Uh, Tom? Yeah? Tom, yep. Tom Willard's here? Okay. Uh, okay. I see Ellen's oh. name on the phone. Is Ellen here or are you calling in on Ellen's phone? I am calling in on my phone, but she's with my grandson. So okay. She won't be here. Then. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think uh, the select board received uh, a memo from us concerning the uh, uh, bass trail and the use of public lands. And the commission would. I guess we would just like to inform the select board and maybe begin a dialogue with the select board on public use of uh, town land. And when this came up the, two weeks ago at the meeting, uh, we thought it was uh, appropriate for us to get a memo off to the select board to give them a little bit of the history of uh, Irish Hill and the town lands up there and how it would pertain to a vast trail and uh, since then, more information has come to light. And I think if uh, the select board would like, we could discuss some now. I, there's probably some new information in this memo that you read that you didn't have two weeks ago. And uh, we'd be willing, you know, not only to have a discussion right now, I know we only have five, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, but again, uh, long-term future, maybe we could address this with the select board at a meeting with this would be the topic, just public use of land specifically, how it would relate to that and other groups uh, that you would love to uh, work with us in a partnership on, on public lands. Well, I can see no problems with that. Um, Phil, um, I was just reading some of the uh, uh, covenants of the easements, and it basically says no, um, no, uh, basically motorized vehicles on on the public land. Hey, is Tom Willard on the phone? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom, did you hear that question? Basically, the the consensus from the memo is. They're thinking that there's no motorized vehicles on the, those town lands. Yeah, it's um, the way the easement is written is that uh, motorized uh, use on the uh, the three parcels, uh, the easement lands, um, is permitted if the town adopts um, a forest management plan and the Vermont Land Trust approves it, then it would be permitted. And in the short term, Tom, uh, what about um, if we were, to, if you were to uh, ex uh, make it so the bridge could take a side-by-side uh, -side for, uh, for uh, emergency services? Would that have to go through this? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you. Build a bridge for emergency services? Yes. Yes. Well, I, I think that on the Darling Road, the Darling Road is a townhouse and it, it's a, a trail. And I don't think even the dark, my opinion would be that the Darling Road itself um, actually is a, it's a trail, designated trail. Um, would be under the town's control um, and not under the easement control. I, I'm not sure about that, but 
it just seems logical to me that if you have a town trail or a town road uh, right away across the land, that that is not um, is not considered. In, in fact, I think that motorized vehicle, as long as it's on the Darling Trail itself, is probably just under the purview of the town's authority. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I'm, I'm not sure that's true. Well, I, I know there was a there was a mishap up there a month ago. Half ago. Yeah. And I was just wondering what the most expedient way to get get to the top would be, would it be from this side or from the Darling Road side? Or from the Crosstown Road side, do you mean? Uh, yes. Yes, which one's most expedient, Crosstown Road side or Darling Road side? Yeah, well, it depends where you are up there, but um, the top is probably six of one, half a dozen of the other is probably equal distance either up the uh, quarry road from the Warrior State Forest or up the Darling Road, probably equal distance. So, so let's take the bridge out of it just for a minute. Just assume the bridge isn't there or we don't need the bridge for a snow machine trail. The sign at the, sign at the beginning of the trail says that motorized vehicles are allowed, right, on both Darling and the Tower Road. But, but you're saying that uh, snow machines don't fall under that? I don't. Is that what the sign says? Paraphrasing, but yeah. I think it's safe to take. Yeah, I what? think it's safe to take TVs. Uh, it it are doesn't specify. Yeah. November, November 16th. Rejoining in the Darling Road. It states that ATVs are allowed. It does not mention snow machines. Yeah, I think I think a while ago we got select board approval for ATVs as long as they stayed on the uh, Darling Road. And I guess I, I don't remember. But I guess that's the, the Bridge Line Trail as well. I'm not sure. To be honest with you, we ever included that in the the plan got BLT approval, so I think that's a that's a problem that the Conservation Commission historically has. I think I didn't realize the sign said that. Can we cut in? Cut in here. I'm okay with it, Josh. Um, we are. Uh, oh, just state you your name. We're not really looking to use uh, much of the town forest land. The town forest lands that we're looking to go across is up beyond the um, beyond the antenna up there. So we would take the uh, Darling Road up to the Ridge Line Trail, which goes up to the tower, and then uh, just past the tower is private-owned land um, that we got permission from that borders the Bur uh, new chunk of Berlin Town Forest which um, would get us over to the uh, Berlin Town Forest owns a slice of land between, you know, some private landowners. And I'm not sure what the town forest land is called up there, but it abuts um, a guy, Carl Brisson and uh, Joe DiMartino. And so it was just a little section of uh, Berlin Town Forest up there that we want to cross. And we would stay right on the uh, main Darling Road, and then the Ridgeline Trail, and then that would be the only town land that we yeah. need to be on, which I thought was already approved for motorized vehicles. Yeah. I, um, can uh, can the Conservation Commission get us a map? I've got a map right here. A, a, a detailed map of, of what they own and what the easements are on each of those. It's online. I'm just confused right now right here as to where the, uh, the yeah, line where from property line Darling is Road, Ridge Line Trail, and here's the tower. So we got to um, see the people saying, this is Darling okay. Town Forest. I, yeah. um, getting on toward the end of the uh, allotted time on this one. Uh, okay. Um, if 
we'll put this on another meeting. Yeah. Is it is it worth a special meeting to discuss this? I I don't know. Well, I'm I'm fine with that. There seems to be conflicting information here, and you know my my thing is is you know we're going into and and. Another COVID season, right? Outdoor recreation. These trails should be able to be open for everyone, right? And it seems a little bit like we're picking and choosing if we allow ATVs that actually do do a little harm to trails compared to the snow machines. Um, and, you know, if we all look at the maps, and I think maybe, you know, Josh can hit up the maps for the rest of us, well, using the existing trails, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't approve this. Can I interject something? Sure. I opened my property up on Black Road in Bath. This was several years ago. Not only did they not stay on the trail that I helped them clear, they threw garbage out on the property. Beer cans, beer bottles. When I called Bath and told them, we have a problem, you need to police them. They said, you can't expect us to control the property and stop everybody that uses our trails. So I stopped them from using the trails. They will never use a trail across my property again. Totally I will not fight like you eight ways to Sunday on using Berlin Pond Road or Black Road. I can assure you of that. If there is another meeting concerning this, I certainly appreciate being notified in fact, I believe it should be warned in the paper so other people that live on Black Road might have a chance to comment as well. Because I know that first meeting, there was a large number of people that were not happy with the prospect. And I'm sure there's still there for the most part. Yeah. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll put this on to another agenda. We'll take and let everyone know. But right now, we've got to uh, move on to the next item here. Very good. Um, well, so just take and uh, uh, Tom, Tom, or someone will call you up. Or give I, I appreciate it. Yeah, not a problem. Uh, Very good. Thank yeah, you. I don't. I don't think we ought to get in the practice of calling individual people, though. Um, I think oh, we no, ought to. I mean, just, yeah, I think we ought to post it like yeah. we should. Well, um, in, the paper, in, that's in, fine. in all yeah. the places that we should, but we don't advertise in the paper. We just we don't have it. They they used to post uh, warnings of meetings in the uh, free yeah. press all the time. The, Actually, I looked on uh, the town website for the agenda for tonight, and I couldn't find it. Yeah, yeah, okay. I couldn't find the agenda because I had uh, people nice. from the neighboring snowmobile club. So it, it's there. Yeah. Let me show you how to get off. Okay. 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 So I just want to make sure that that we're clear. So even even without the bridge being repaired, Josh, you guys would be all set. Okay, I'll I mean, talk without, to the conservation committee myself. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll stop and uh, see Tom and show him what we're talking about. Right. Because I think there's a conflicting information here. Thinking right. we're gonna go and renegade all this land up right. there, which is totally not the case. Right. And that was our understanding originally was you guys were using pre-existing trails. Exactly. Yeah, we're not even going to have to cut a tree. Right. So I, I think, you know, from, I think if everyone has a chance to talk, this yeah. should be and resolvable. Tonight. Resolvable yeah. very easily. Yeah. Do you understand that, Brad? Uh, where, where we are on there? Yeah, that leaves me Maybe. Maybe. Exactly. Okay, this is, is there going to be another meeting? Are you just throwing, throwing, that throwing it out? No, you stand no, by? No, I really like this. It's, going it's, on. it's really yeah. not good this having sidebars, yeah. okay? Okay. This is the way we're coming down. We're no. Taking, no. We'll do this at another, uh, another meeting. And then hopefully it's more than 10 minutes because it's going to yep. take more than 10 minutes to have yep. this discussion. <laughs> okay. To answer you, sir, there is going to be another meeting. Okay. Next. Next. Will it be meeting? posted out here or posted? Or sooner. How, how will it be posted? Bob, no or sooner. We have a we, short we, deadline. We put it on the town website and we put it here. Um, and I will call you, Ken. I'm sorry if you if okay. you don't have email. I, I don't know no, what to I do you. not have email. All right, then. Anyway, okay. I will call you. Okay. Very good. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And I'm I'm interested just just for a second if we sure. could. 
He's holding up a sign with a Vermont State statue on it. What is that? Could you just elaborate what that? Yeah, I'm not an expert. Uh, Dave Rulo, anyway, because I think you want that. Government. Yeah, I just I yeah. just want to make sure because yeah. I saw I know that. They're, they're state law statues. I'm not an expert of them at all, but I believe that it does read that the town of Berlin has the power through this right. to open up a road yeah. for the purpose of snowmobiling. If okay, if that's what you agree on. Right. Yeah, and yeah, just another thing for the Berlin conservation. Um, I don't know if they're aware, but bikes right now, class one, class two, class three motorized bikes. It's a thing that's coming too. So if they consider any motorized use up on that land, uh, hopefully if they if they don't already know about it, hopefully start paying attention to conversations. And we've uh, been working with it at the town of Barry for us with the Trust for Public Land and stuff like that. And kind of we're allowing class one bikes, um, and then class two and three basically they start acting more like a motorcycle. But yeah. uh, as people get older, they're sure. they're using that assistance. So okay. something to. Okay. Be Thank, aware you. Of. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else you need to No, sorry. Thank you. That's it. Um, right. So, so I don't know if you heard all that, Phil. We're, I'm going to uh, maybe next yeah. meeting. I don't know if it's going to be next meeting. I think we probably didn't gather some information here, and I think it's like we're maybe well, we, digest some of this. Um, uh, well, we, yeah. We at the Conservation Commission need to, uh, uh, you know, have a, a conference with Vermont Land Trust and see it on covenants and all that. Uh, we might, as Tom Willard mentioned, the town said ATVs on that trail, but in fact we didn't maybe notify them correctly. So we'd have to we have to do a little homework too. Oh, okay. Yeah. And the bridge where we left with the bridge right now. Per we, we're not doing much with the bridge. <laughs> Personally, I think we ought to pause until we figure out what we yeah, can. Yeah. yeah. I, I, the, the suggestion is just to put this issue on pause until we get it right. Did you hear that, Phil? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to react to it because I, I know that we had. Uh, approval to move ahead with the bridge from a meeting in early May. So uh, I'll, I think all the commission members are still listening. So we'll take that on advisement too and uh, have, have more information for everybody at the next meeting, I guess. And it, it will likely not be the next select board meeting. We've all got to gather our information and, and collectively uh, share it and digest it so i doubt that that's going to happen in two weeks but maybe it can okay all right but you right. you let me know phil what the where the conservation commission is yeah we will uh, do a little more research and get back to everyone thank you phil thank you yeah have a good night Okay, uh, Brandy Saxon, Chiona. Brandy, are you on the call? I am. Okay. Carla so, here with us. Pardon me? And Carla too? Carla, are you on? Carla's going to come. So she oh, have... okay. Okay, Brandy, uh, uh, you're on. I've got a bunch of this uh, agenda as well, so go ahead. Okay. Well, the first thing I was going to talk to the board about was the neighborhood development area. Um, we have been in previous meetings talking about the new John. center yeah, no. and I'm... looking at the map of that area. Uh, but we are also doing an application for a neighborhood development area. And that is not, it does not have to be um, the exact same geographic area as the new town center. Um, it can be anything within the new town center, um, anything within a quarter of a mile of the new town center, and um, we might be able to push that quarter of a mile out further um, at, uh, if you can make some, some arguments about why you can't use some of the land that you do have within a quarter of a mile. 
So uh, you could have gotten a map to look at or have maps there to look at um, showing three pieces of land that the planning commission looked at last week. Um, and we think that these are um, a good starting point for the neighborhood development area designation. So it would be uh, the mall property and the car dealership, so everything that's in the new town center on the south side, essentially of Fisher Road, it would not be the main campus of the hospital because um, they don't plan to put any housing over there. Um, and then it would be two pieces of land uh, that front on Payne Turnpike um, where you could, um, also, you, you've got services and we, we can um, make the argument for pedestrian connectivity and, and such for those areas. So that is um, the recommendation for the boundary um, to start with. The one thing we did hear from um, South Burlington, when we talked to them, was that they've been fairly successful uh, in the years since they got their initial designation in going back and getting um, additional properties and boundary changes uh, once they had their original designation. So um, you can go to the Neighborhood Development Area Program with a specific property and project. Um, the developer can do that or the town could do it. Um, in, in partnership with the developer. So in the future, as uh, development expands and pushes out here from the new town center, you will have other opportunities to continue to add land um, to the neighborhood development area. So we want to, in this first round, we want to get the land that's got the, the most likely to be um, is the land of service is that, that, that's most likely to be available sooner um, and that you can meet the walkability requirements for. So um, we did have a little bit of talk at the planning commission about going out further on Stewart Road or um, or other other directions, you know, to the west, um, other properties to the west, but that would require more commitment on the town side in terms of sidewalks um, than what we're currently showing. So uh, the end of that discussion was to hold with these three as a recommendation and then in the future potentially um, seek further um, properties to the west. Randy, can you go over the benefits? You, you, you provided this benefit uh, sheet, so. Yes, I did give you the uh, benefit uh, matrix. So uh, right now the major uh, benefit under the statute as it's written that uh, the properties that get into the MBA will get, um, it, it's a bit of a technical thing, but from an efficiency point of view, they will be considered existing settlements. So uh, under criteria 9L in F250, uh, that's the sprawl related um, criteria, they, these properties would not have to meet the requirements of that criteria and would be considered existing settlements, um, like the land in village centers and, and designated downtown. So, so, so that's the, right. the big, the big advantage. There is, um, there is language in there, uh, in the statute with benefits for priority housing projects. I think the one thing that property owners in Berlin will run into because right now those um, projects are limited to 25 units. Um, that, that's actually going to be probably smaller than most of the housing projects that you would see in this area. Um, so it's not, um, it's not likely that that's going to be as much of a benefit in Berlin right now as it is in some other places which have larger populations and don't have that cap. If they're going to be... Uh, you speak up. Uh, so if there's going to be um, uh, bike paths and whatnot to these other areas, then when we do Fisher Road, maybe we should, I mean, the culvert, we should, 
So, yeah, so I have a question along those same lines. One of the problems with the 30 acres that Mr. Lamberton brought up when he was here was there was no way to connect them. If we had a bike path along, essentially along the sidewalk or Fisher Road down to his property, does it then connect them? We have a lot of extra hospital space here in parking lots that um, Mr. Lamberton is likely to build and develop his land before they ever do anything with the parking lots. And so I'm just wondering, is there a way around it by building a bike path along, along the side of the road there to meet the needs of both? So um, I, I, I heard most of that. So you're asking about putting a bike path along Payne um, Turnpike and Fisher Road. Um, that would be gross and would um, definitely meet the commitment the town has to walkability in this area. Um, we looked at the official map uh, a few meetings ago, and that shows sidewalks um, on Payne Turnpike and Fisher Road, but that can be substituted out with a bike path. Um, so if you are thinking about sizing some infrastructure along there, um, thinking about having either sidewalks or a path of some sort um, would be a good idea. The issue with regard to Mr. Lamberton's property and being in the new town center, which is distinct from this neighborhood development area, is that the walkability and connection needs to be between the two properties, uh, between the mall property and his property. And that involves the, the, there's the stream that runs in between them and there are wetlands on each side of those streams. So getting a vehicular pedestrian connection and basically contiguous development on east-west access through there um, is, is pretty pretty difficult to see how that would, would work out. The, the neighborhood development area criteria are a little bit different, um, and the perimeter idea of sidewalks or a bike path along Payne Turnpike and Fisher Road would meet those requirements. So there's slightly different requirements for the two programs. Yeah, so I, I, I was trying to solve the problem of Mr. Lamberton's concerns on connecting it with a bike path along Fisher Road and Payne Turnpike. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, hearing the concerns of Mr. Lamberton, uh, neighborhood development doesn't do him any good in that area. Because well, of costs already associated. Talk with him um, about that, and um, he would benefit from the relief from 9L. So that criteria around um, sprawl and whether it's existing settlement or not. So that would uh, be a benefit to his property. Um, and so we're continuing to talk through that. My sense, because uh, Brandon, we just have shared some uh, meetings with. Wayne and his team here just this last week, uh, my sense is that they're getting a little better comfort level with the neighborhood development area. Um, as, as you said, those discussions are still going on. It's, uh, it, it's not the, the, the perfect um, solution, uh, but it's, it's a good solution. So um, I, I think they see some value, and I, I always hate putting words in people's mouths. Uh, and uh, again, maybe we'll have Wayne visit this group again here in the near future. Yeah. Did Did you all get Mr. Lamberton's email today? Okay. I probably do. I haven't. I don't. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it'd be good for all of us to just read it and absorb what he's saying because there's I think there's some fairly big impacts. To, to his property as well. Yes, uh, anything else on this? Randy, I'm going to jump down here to number five, and you talked about the whole application process and settle. Okay. So um, I just wanted to uh, update the select board on the schedule and where we are. Um, we are in the process of putting together the draft applications for both the new town center and the neighborhood development area. 
Um, I expect there to be a draft, those drafts available for you to review prior to your next meeting in two weeks. Um, then the, although are you in, you're in three weeks. What? The, the, the planning commission is going to meet on the 28th of October and uh, review and um, hopefully sign off on the draft and the goal would be for the select board to do the same. Um, I think you're maybe November 2. So that's the, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then following that, we can submit the preliminary application. That doesn't mean that we are wedded to everything that's in that application. We can still be making changes and adjustments before the final, but we get it off to the state so that they do their review, which can be two to three months. Um, so we want to get that to them as soon as possible. Um, we think we've got a complete enough package here that we're going to be able to do that. Um, but you guys get to be the ones who say yeah, send it in or not. How long can we go before we can't make any changes to it? Randy, once we have a draft in, how long can we go to, or, to where we cannot make any changes, any further changes? Um, the the state will do their review and they'll get back to us with comments. Uh, then we need to put together a final application. So we can make whatever changes we want up until the final application. So we're not limited on the type of change? Uh, I just want to make sure. No, I mean, if we started entirely over with something different, I think we'd have to go back to the preliminary process. Right, so... so we can I, continue yeah. to make, and make adjustments. Brandy, I just I just want to make sure everyone's clear. So, if we adjust, readjust the boundaries of the area of the new town center, would that be considered a significant change to where we would have to resubmit, or would that be considered okay? Uh, I think it would it would depend on the extent of the change. If what you're considering is whether we would adjust the boundary to include Mr. Weberton's land yep. um, in the in the final and not have offered that to the state. Uh, to look at in the preliminary, I don't think that would work. Um, uh, the state is going to want to do that review because that's a, that's a significant, you know, addition of, of land that they won't have looked at. Brandy, can you just uh, refresh uh, all of our memories on the, the, the initial town center map did not include the hospital, and can you talk? about why the hospital is included now? So when you did the town plan, you basically colored in the area between Payne Turnpike 62 and Fisher Road as area that you would be looking at for the new town center, knowing that not all of it could get in because it was more than 125 acres. Uh, when you, then the town had, after you adopted this plan, or maybe, maybe even it happened before the plan got adopted, um, you had uh, a meeting, the planning commission had a meeting with um, the folks at the HPD, sort of a preliminary, um, we were thinking about a fine type of meeting, and got some guidance from them. Um, there was some initial mapping done, looking at where the 125 acres might lie, and they provided feedback on that approach, which tried to cut out more of the wetlands and just leave in the developable land. Uh, they didn't like that approach. Um, they, at some point, um, looked uh, favorably upon the idea of getting the hospital campus in, um, and that is, uh, ultimately, the direction that uh, we went uh, with this process uh, after sort of weighing that versus getting the school in. Um, and we talked about the issues with getting the school in are actually the same issues as getting Mr. Lamberton's land in. Um, it's making that crossing. Um, that's a problem. So the north south access just became much more uh, viable to meet the criteria. Thank you.
guys have any further questions of Brandy? Not right now. Nope. Okay, Brandy, uh, I'm going to cut you loose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Okay. So I've got a couple items here. Uh, the first one is the, uh, the uh, municipal support letter for a, uh, a municipal facility in the, in the Berlin Town Center. It doesn't obligate the town to to uh, put something there. It says that it'll, you'll investigate it uh, when the time comes. Um, in, it's, um, so I uh, again, this is a piece that has to be uh, part of that application. Brandy just mentioned. I uh, uh, hope you folks have had a chance to, re to review it, and I, uh, I'd ask for your. Uh, consideration and approval of the of uh, this resolution of support. I make the motion to approve the resolution in support of locating the future municipal facilities in the Berlin Town Center as presented by Tom Badowski and inclusive in our packet tonight. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I just want to make sure I understand it correctly. So if we're, in my mind, we're not still 100% sold on the boundaries, right? So it, will the draft submission be submitted once we do this? Or there's, there's several pieces. This. Some other things that we have tonight, uh, uh, and the planning commission officially adopting all the maps and stuff, bring it to you guys, and you guys look at the maps and say, okay, this is what we want to do. For a draft. Or it's, it's a draft, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure that we have that. You have the last bite of the apple. Okay. So the select board has the last bite of the apple. The, the uh, thing that uh, strikes me about this is that at some point in time, we're going to have to figure out what um, we are willing to put over there as far as town uh, or uh, uh, municipal, facilities. municipal facilities. Um, I personally don't feel that it would be proper to put a police station over there. It's just too crowded. Um, town offices, more so. You know, it, that makes more sense to me. Um, to, to move any of the, uh, the fire or rescue or anything like that over there. Again, you have the same problem with the police. It's just too crowded. It, you know, cars coming and going. You don't want to be running over grandma going into Walmart. So. Um, Who's grandma? Yeah. It doesn't matter <laughs> who's, it. <laughs> who's ever it is, it's not going to be good. Uh, but, uh, you, but you see what I'm saying. It, yeah. it, it just, you know, for the, for the town offices to have a building or to, for the town to consider putting a building over there, it would need to be the town offices. Right. And, and, I'm sorry. And, and what, what you all have to just keep in the back of your mind, this is a, it's an all planning document. So, yeah. so this is for a future that may be 10 or 15 years out. I can envision a public work, a true public work department for the town of Berlin in the not that distant future. And, yeah. and you know, it could be the public work board uh, the, the department that's over there. Oh yeah. There's multiple, multiple uses that, that you can do. You, you can do, do yeah. Yeah, John. And nothing says that we have to build. Nothing we says could, that. We could lease space off someone that's already building over there. Uh, um, absolutely. So, yeah. you know, that puts us in a better position of not having to maintain a building. Yeah. So. And there's value to this campus as well, right? Yeah. I mean, for here, I could see this going to the if the police department would take this over. I can understand. I could see that better. So, okay. Uh, anything else? On this? I, I need action on it. Well, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Is Angelina still on the phone, Tom? Angelina, are you on the phone? Yes. Okay. Did, 
How did you vote on that last one? I said aye. Okay, okay. sorry. Thank you, sir. So the next piece I have uh, for you folks, I uh, introduced this at the last meeting. This was the, the municipal water and wastewater allocation ordinance. Uh, so this, well, we reviewed it last week, uh, excuse me, last meeting. I sent you guys over a recipe on how to adopt it. I sent you the Word documents to see if there was any people had any concerns or changes. I got no um, no feedback, so I would ask you to um, uh, is it adopted? I'm sorry, Daniel well, Brad. I, I, I think we have to uh, uh, we have to uh, warn it. We have to have those two meetings. I but I think you but. That's after you guys say yeah, you want to adopt do. it. Yeah, adopt it. That's yeah. the word I'm looking for. Then we have the meet. Then we have the two uh, hearing hearing, and then we then it uh, becomes uh, part of the ordinance. Again, the two hearings may be part of the charter. It's not part of the yeah, legal like sounds. Yeah, like I said, uh, find out from Ron yeah. how that goes. I'm we'll pretty sure we have to have the two two meetings. Okay. All right. Before a final vote. Yeah. No, you could vote on it before it's a. Uh, you have to take. It. You have to have it so that you have something to look at, for the public to look at, and then you've taken the final, after, the, if you have uh, no uh, objections or no changes to make to it, then you have your final vote. But we need a, uh, a motion just to get this before the public. Okay, but, I, but he's saying, uh, I just want to make sure I have it right, he's saying that we would adopt it, and then we'd have two public mirroring meetings, and then it would become law. You would then... Uh, it's like a 60 day uh, out. Yeah. So it, it's not. And I think I that's when you, that's, I think that's when you officially vote again to sign this document. I think. Okay. I, I've never, I haven't done one. As, as long as we're signing it after we hear from the public, right? I Correct. mean, I think that's, that's why you have the public hearing, yeah, right? It just doesn't get signed okay. until after all of that. Okay. But uh, you just needed a motion to take and get it before the public. I make the motion to move the water and wastewater allocation documentation that's provided to us tonight before the public. I second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Angelina? Aye. Uh, motion carries. So Tom, take in uh, for the next meeting, like I said, I find out from Rob, but I think what we do is uh, what we Historically, here we've done is just uh, uh, have it uh, like the first part of a, a select board yeah. meeting, and then we can. So, so I, I know this document has to be part of your minutes. This, this, yep. And then uh, this has to appear in the newspaper or a or a, uh, uh, a, a concise um, uh, version of it. Uh, and so, I'm planning on doing that this week. Okay. And that will get it going, and then yep. I'll, I'll put it on a, on a future future uh, meeting for you guys. Yep. Thank you, Tom. Uh, let's see. And then Vtrans alternate. Yeah. So I, I introduced this to you at the last meeting. Uh, Vtrans has a, uh, uh, a grant out here for um, uh, planning for uh, uh, non vehicular. Um, uh, projects, bike and TED and, and that, that kind of project. So I, I sat in on a uh, on a conference call last week uh, for, and I would like to uh, do, do a scoping study of that bike and uh, TED path around the new town center. For scoping studies, they uh, offer a cap of fifty thousand dollars in a grant. Of which, uh, of which the lo local municipality has to match 20% of. So um, uh, I haven't got any quotes, but talking to Brandy and, and some of her other counterparts, 
You think the scope? Uh, you you need the whole 50k to do the to do a, a scoping study of this. So um, uh, I, this application isn't due to VTrans uh, until middle of November. So what, what I wanted to get back and tell you what the, the, the dollars were, and and you can digest that to more more. But eventually, I'm going to ask you to approve that so I could write the grant and, and get it submitted um, in the time frame that, that they're re requiring. But it is a 20% a uh, match of the of the uh, of the current of the of the request. And that's for the uh, the bike pedestrian walks? Correct. And is there a, a match in kind also or uh, you can do match in kind, but I, with the scoping study, I don't think there's anything in kind we can do. do yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So I will have this on a future. Yeah, yeah next uh, meeting. Yep. Yeah, I'll get this some more. Um, uh, if there is any more information, I'll get you. Uh, they offer. Um, I think the total the total package available is two point two million dollars. And there was probably 80 people on the call, so I think there's going to be a lot of applications that yeah. looking for. Well, uh, we have it before us next meeting. Uh, that'll give you plenty of time to get it in. Yes, I have through the 21st of November. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Tom. Yeah. Anything else on this? No, okay. thank you. Um, let's see here. Uh, pro, uh, select Board prorated meeting stipend, John. Sure. So at the last meeting, I suggested that um, that we pay the select board their stipend based on the number of meetings that uh, they attend, and um, asked you all to consider it. I think um, Tom has put together. Diana's put together. Clearly, I'd like to hear this clearly, please. So at the last meeting, I asked that. Um, the select board consider uh, paying the stipend for select board members based on the number of members based on the number of meetings that they attend. So Diane has put together a, um, a, a Excel spreadsheet of the number of meetings each member has attended and calculated the pays based on the number of meetings. Um, I don't know that there's an agenda. My thought was that we should be paid for the meetings that we attend. Um, when I was on the fire department in Northfield, uh, for example, at each uh, you know monthly meeting that we would go to or each drill that we would go to, we'd get ten dollars. Not a big deal. Just like I kind of consider you know the select board pay pretty pretty minor for the work we do. Um, but, you know, if we didn't show up, we didn't get the $10. And at the end of the year, you would get your check based on the number of meetings you attended. That was my, that was my thought process on, on how it should work. Um, and that's, that's why I asked the select board to consider it. Do you think that at four, uh, elected officials should be afforded equal treatment? Yep. Okay. Is that true? No. One of the things I'm finding is that uh, it's hard for us as a board to be critical of other people um, 
not participating. And uh, we need to have uh, some accountability to the public. Uh, the stipend is not that much, but it is something, and it needs to be, um, I mean, if, if it's no different than if you work at a job uh, as a burger flipper, if you're not there, you don't get paid. That's pretty much. But I am not your employee. No, you are the town's employee, and the select board is is that is our bailiwick. Our bailiwick is to take and see that the money is well spent, and the money needs to be spent on a product. If you want to look at your time served here as a product, then if you're not here, then why would you expect to be paid? Spending money and talking about this <clears throat> is uh, not going to be saving any money by cutting the stipend. How do you see that? Because we're spending the town's money having conversations about this. This might also fall under um, another issue under the Title I, Chapter 5. You can go ahead and pull that up. Section 314, Penalty and Enforcement. What is the title in the uh, what does that entail? A, a person who is a member of a public body who knows who knowingly and intentionally violates the provisions of the subchapter. A person who knowingly and intentionally violates the provisions of the subchapter on behalf of or at the behest of and intentionally participates in the wrongful exclusion of any person or persons from any leading subject to the subchapter shall be guilty of a misdemeanor and it shall be fined not more than $500. How are we excluding you? Do you think that this is, might be an exclusion under that law? I, and I, again, this is, I don't think it's directed at, at any one person. I, it's, it's, it applies to, to everyone when people miss meetings. It's, it's not directed at one person. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Go ahead, John. I would just give another example. Uh, when I was on the select board in Northfield, under tough budget times, we cut our uh, select board stipend from $3,000 to zero. So the select board worked for free because we were cutting budgets and making hard choices. And we felt that the select board should bear as much brunt as anyone else. Um, it was not directed at any member at that point, just like this isn't directed at any member here. It's purely good fiscal responsibility to make sure that we're getting uh, and that we're, that we're accountable to the citizens. So on a path forward. How many meetings, John, did you attend when you were a CV fiber delegate? And were you treated equally? How many meetings was I attending where? Yeah, you were a delegate there. I that was when I was so in North. That was when I was in Northfield. I was a representative for Northfield uh, for a short time and gave up that position. Uh, I did not sit on any other board at that time, and then I moved to Berlin and I did not pursue uh, joining that because we already had two representatives here. So I guess I think the answer is zero, if I'm understanding you correctly. Again, I don't know if that's um, germane to this conversation. Um, a, a path forward would be a motion or to table. To get rid of all statements for all select board people? It's, it's whatever the select board would decide. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just offering a path forward yeah. to... To move so, this meeting along. 
So it, it was my idea, so I'll well, go. A stipend is not a, a, a wage. A stipend is something that people get for volunteering their time. Right. Yeah. So it's not a wage. It's not a wage. So I'll make a motion to, um, let me think about this for a minute. I'll make a motion to uh, break down the select board stipend by the number of meetings attended. Is that clear enough on what what we're looking to do? Are you talking about going f from here going forward? I don't. It 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 can be. I'm 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 fine with that from this point going forward. I really you know I don't even know what the stipend is. I don't think I've got one. I know I haven't. It's on the team's way. We, we, we need a second here for right. It looks like each person gets a different amount. So I just I wasn't sure, and that doesn't that's irrelevant to the the what I'm trying to do. I just want to make sure that you know from this point going forward, you get paid for the meetings you attend, and that's the the public gets to value okay. all the money. Okay, that's fine. We, we need excuse me, Angelina. Excuse me, Angelina. I was going to be out for the month of August. Is that not correct? Excuse me, Angelina. We need a second on this motion before we have discussion. The only question I have is in terms of do we want to do it from this point going forward or do we want to do it for... Just give me a second and we can continue to do some of the discussion. Okay, very good. Second. All in favor. Uh, now we go into discussion. Angelina? Angelina, do you have a comment? I'm sorry, I didn't hear what, what was just said. It was it was moved and seconded. And now it's open for discussion. Would you like to, to say something? Yeah, I disagree. Is there any other discussion? John. So, I, I, so, the, so the, you, yeah. you wanted to take mention about going from this point going forward. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if we want to do it from this point going forward, if we want to look at it from this session, for lack of a better term. Since March. Given yeah. that you've done a spreadsheet yeah. and looking at it from okay. this first and if you, I could just clarify a little bit, too. I generally take from January through December, and I take the first uh, oh, okay. payroll in December. And that's how calculated. That's why the, the amount's a little bit different. I got it. So okay. if I was to go forward from here, what do I do from January till this time? And that's what I'm kind of looking yeah. at, too, I from think that's, yeah. making it as less cumbersome for you in the process that you, you follow. Probably I think that it should be from January through December of this calendar year so that it can be calculated appropriately. Are you making an amendment to my motion? We haven't, we haven't voted your motion in yet, but let's, okay. get, let's get this horse beat first. Okay. Well, yeah. Hey, that's a clarification. I don't think it's a yeah. Make a public vote. Uh, I think there will be a public vote. Oh, yeah. yeah. It definitely would go before the public, Angelina. What? No, no, I'd, have to no, no. I'd, have to, I'd have to ask is. Um, This would just be for the stipends for us for this year, for the, for the since 2020, from January, I usually, January, normally yeah. I say January to December. Going forward. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that clearly. It, it, for the calendar year of 2020. Uh -huh. What about it? That's what this motion would entail. For the stipend for the calendar year 2020. Okay. I didn't hear what was said previous to that. I apologize. Well, I didn't hear you clearly. Which part of it was that you didn't hear, Angelina? <laughs> I heard parts of <clears throat> for starting now or in. 2021, is that correct? No, actually we were discussing at what point we would move this forward, whether we would move it from this point forward or whether we would do it for this calendar year 
January through December 2020. And we were discussing that that would most likely be the best route of action because it correlates best with the payment structure and the way that Diane Isabel produces the payments in December. So no stipends for this year? Is that what you're saying? No, they're going to, they're looking at uh, putting a dollar value for each meeting and then paying the dollar amount for meetings attended. Starting in 2021. 2020. Okay. Okay. Any further comments? Any further comments, Angelina? No, I just want to clarify, there will be no stipends for this year, is that correct? It would just be for the meetings that are uh, attended. The stipends would still be in place for this year, but it would be based on attendance and would be calculated per board member, per meetings attended for this calendar year, yeah, January. I think that might be illegal and it still it needs to get further looked into. In what way would it be illegal? Uh, it would fall under exclusion. Not excluding anybody. Section 314, penalty and enforcement. Do you have that, John? I do. I, I don't know what to tell her. It, it, it's not relevant to what what the intent is not to exclude anyone. It's just to move forward with a stipend process in paying based on the number of meetings each board member attends. There's no, I mean, it's about wrongful exclusion. I don't, I don't think it's germane that, to the conversation. Yeah, that's usually you can take and don't let people come in. Over. And there's a section under equality as well. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. Motion carries. Uh, so, uh, Police Chief Recruitment, uh, the hiring committee has met and have uh, personally interviewed um, two candidates, and um, um, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Chairman for an executive session to discuss those two candidates tonight. Okay, uh, a motion to go into executive session. Not, not now. Not at, now. The, at the end of all this other stuff. Okay. I'm just going to let you know that that's. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense to me. Okay. The town administrator recruitment, the, uh, that committee has interviewed its first session of candidates. They hope to get through uh, all the sessions by the end of October. Um, and uh, ideally, the, by mid-November, uh, that committee will come back uh, to you with uh, recommendations to uh, our two candidates as well. Okay, and the, uh, anything else on that, Tom? No. Anything on the, uh, okay, emergency medical services RFP? We, we've talked about this for a couple meetings now, um, and so I put together, it was in your packet, uh, basically the, the RFP for EMS services. Uh, our current contract expires June 30th of 2021, uh, and so this is a, uh, uh, RFP for uh, three years with an uh, option, an additional option of two years after that. I'm just looking for uh, the board's blessing on this, and I will get it sent out to uh, to those professional organizations. I think this is just an RFP. Do you actually need a vote? 
I don't no, I don't think it is. No, I just uh, I mean, if worse comes to worse, then we can do it by uh, consensus. Well, and there, yeah, there's provision in here that we can that we can throw out all yeah. of the oh, yeah. proposals. That's right. So just tell me to do it. Do it. All yes. right. Thank you. All right. Uh, the LGER grant. Uh, we have uh, six projects that are working their way through the through the procurement queue, queue now. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, approximately thirty thousand dollars left of that seventy thousand dollar grant, um, and, and so we're asking fire, um, uh, public works, and select board members to think about um, potential monies, uh, uses of this money. It's to to it's to be used for relieving COVID. Um, uh, issues that that uh, municipalities are faced with. One of the things that have been approved is a uh, enhanced audio and visual uh, system for this room, which I think would be very good. Um, uh, so again, there's about thirty thousand dollars still in in hand that uh, we're trying to develop projects around. So so think about it. Maybe talk to other municipal folks, see what they've done, and and uh, get the get that to us. Okay, and uh, municipal road grants. Yes. Yeah, so you remember uh, Ashley visited us. Uh, oh, what was last meeting. Give me give, give me the last meeting. And uh, Berlin has participated in the. Uh, municipal road grant and aid program. Um, this is, I need you folks to um, uh, adopt this letter of intent to uh, participate. Again, if you so desire, I would encourage you to, to participate. Um, and I've had this in your packet for a, a couple meetings now. So I, I'd like, to, this letter has to be signed and due to the state agency by October 30th. Do I have a motion? I make the motion to accept the letter of intent to participate in the Municipal Roads Grant and Aid Program presented to us tonight by Tom Badowski. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion yep. carried. Angelina, how do you vote on that? Aye. Thank you. Getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, so uh, there's a request to maybe start looking at um, department projects. So I put together, I did put together, I stole uh, this this project status report, and just just see if you guys um, what your thoughts are on this. It, it could be changed around. This is something. It's a it's a word document, so it could it could be a live document that that department heads can can um, uh, uh, input. I'm not quite sure who the department heads would be. I'm not thinking highway, uh, treasurer, planning, uh, the, you know, so, uh, but it's just, you don't need to do anything this week uh, or this week. I just want you to look at it, see if this is what what you were thinking that. It, so is it, so is the intent of this um, in response to my ask for the department head reports? Yes. Okay. Agenda. Yeah, you know. I have some, I have some thoughts that I could send you just around. You know, I I, I don't want to confuse the the team by you know calling them project status reports necessarily. You know, I'd, I I can send you one or two that I may still have of what I was thinking. You know, and send it to the group for okay. for a review to talk about it next meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you, Josh. Yep. Uh, minutes for October fifth, twenty twenty. I make the motion to approve the minutes for October 5th, 2020 as presented. We hear a second. 
I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And Jelena has a minute for October 5th. You okay with it? Uh, she has. Yeah. She, yeah. Doesn't matter. Um, we'll for roll round table. No, nope. with Tom Willard appointment. I'm sorry, oh, oh. that one addition to the very top. Yes. Uh, Tom Willard's appointment to the Conservation Commission. I, I sent uh, Tom's request, it was pretty late today. I sent it to you. Tom's been on the Conservation Commission for a very long time, uh, he's been uh, very intimate on the pur purchase of the town land. Um, my recommendation to this board would be to approve his his candidacy to the Conservation Commission. Is there a motion to? I make a motion to approve the candidacy of Tom Willard as the appointment to the Conservation Commission. I'd second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Angelina? Aye. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Motion carries. Now round table. Give, give Tom his uh, congratulations. I will do that. <laughs> we want to do table one. Uh, let's take and uh, skip oh. right to executive session. Oh, uh, we got to take and do uh, approval of licenses, permits, and vouchers application. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 2108 for payroll from September 27th, 2020 to October 10th, 2020, paid on October 14th, 2020, in the amount of $37,829.85. Payroll warrant 21G08 with checks 20597 to 20634 in the amount of $58,761.21 and September journal entries and tax administrative adjustment. Do you hear a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Angelina? Um, motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Move for roll round table to after uh, after uh, executive session. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to have an executive session to talk about the police chief candidates, and I would like to invite uh, uh, have you invite yourself. Uh, uh, <laughs> Tim Bombardier yeah. and Trevor Whipple, maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All three of us. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Or a motion. Put it that way. I can't do that. A motion. I make a motion to go into an executive session. With the, with the included guests. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so moved. Yeah. Um, a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 